I don't know what to hit here. What's up guys, Doc Mac 101 welcome back to another video and I have an awesome collection unboxing for you guys today. So I bought this whole collection from my buddy Jonah as you saw. There was a lot of stuff at the beginning. He got married, he got engaged, married, and had a kid within like a year and a half span. So he ended up selling me all of his airsoft stuff. I've played with this dude quite a few times. Um, good friend from Ohio, and so he was looking to sell his collection, and so he came to me. This little guy also made it in as a little sneak peek before the collection unboxing. Alec Mack did pick up for himself a new summer carry gun today. This is a little bit different than the uh, the good old 6mm, a little bit different color, a little bit different velocity. I picked up a SIG 365 XL, and this thing is awesome. We're going to go ahead and start out with his plate here. So up first, I believe, is some sort of Condor system. He actually ran this and then a chest rig a few times. So I saw him run this plate carrier a lot. As you can tell back here, we got another Polar Star in the video, which I'm sure you guys are thrilled about. He's got the good old Gibbon the 40. Jared has tuned the gun that is in this video, so I'm sure you guys will be excited for that. But yeah, great little starter plate carrier. He ran his tank and air setup here in the back, which is what a lot of people do for kind of more a simpler thing. It doesn't look like he has really any mag pouches on there. I don't know if he took them off and transitioned them to real steel stuff, but he's got a really, really nice setup here. This is a Ninja 904500. Looks like it's in really good shape. I believe it should be current hydro. Yeah, it's got plenty of hydro left on it. These red line SFR regulators are awesome. And then he's got a pretty cool little amped line here as well. And the primary gun that he has been running for a long time. This is a Polar Star F2 Crytac LVOAC War Sport. Trust me, it is that War Sport, the lower and upper R. He just got a little bit of smaller upper on right now. And this thing is awesome. This is actually only the second F2 that I've ever owned, I believe. I had another one. I've not fielded any one of them, but I've heard really good things. Jared obviously loves them as an engine. He would rate it second to a Fusion engine, which I think is kind of correct for them. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start from the front here. So this is an Evike Hive Suppressor. I actually really like the way these things look. I think they're super cool. He's running a stubby grip on there as well. I'm not a huge fan of like super, super stubby guns like this because I don't play a ton of indoor. If I did, I'd really like it. But for Ohio and outdoor airsoft, we need a little bit longer uppers to get some really, really good range. It doesn't matter a ton. The length of the barrel matters way more. Your internal hop up setup but it is nice to have a little bit longer barrel length. I think like 14.5 is the perfect kind of style that I like, but these are super, super fun. If I had more indoor fields, you better believe I'd be running a short gun all the time. I'd probably run something like this, but with a really cool like muzzle break on it. He is running a T1 up top. This is awesome. This gun has been fully tuned by SureShot Midget, so you know it's awesome. Check out that crazy trigger pull right there just so you how short it is. It's absolutely insane. Like the fact that every time you're doing that, that is semi-auto, that's firing semi-auto. I think he has this gun set to like 40 rounds or 35 rounds a second. I don't know if the F2 can go over 35 or 40. It might actually be set limited at 30, but don't quote me on that. I'm not super knowledgeable at the engines themselves, but super cool trigger. I believe this is also one of the retro arms triggers. I love these Crytac Defiance grips. I think they are super, super nice. And then rounding out the back is the Crytac Defiance stock for the first upper. Upper number two is the War Sport Upper. This is the one with the War Sport Trades. This is the LVOAC. It's a little bit longer than the LVOAS. This was actually the first Crytek I ever owned. This is very similar to the Umbrella build that I just unboxed. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I love these rail systems. I love Crytek construction. Both of these have really solid hop-up systems and setups on them. This one's got a pro win. Um, I believe Jared's running like a flat hop in here. I'm not 100% sure. And then the one in here is equally solid as well. I think this is just the stock hop up, but it does have a little bit more upgrades. I think the bucking is upgraded, but it might actually be stock barrel. All right, now that we got the gun out of the way, let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open for lightning round with Alec Mac 111, number one of this video. I told you guys you weren't going to be disappointed with how much stuff was in this unboxing. Starting out number one, we have die knee pads. I believe he played paintball before moving into airsoft. They actually feel really, really comfy. Oh yeah, we got an Under Armour boonie. This thing is sweet. I actually don't know what color this is, but I love boonies. Looks like we have some sort of USGI basic uh, ACU chest ring. Got a bunch of black pouches. Oh, he is rocking one of the Ace Tech AC5000 chronos. I actually gave one of these to Sure Shot Midget when he was in need of a new chrono. Another hats of sorts. This one looks like it's a Condor one. And up next, we have a pretty cool Cryptek chest rig of some sort. This kind of looks like an RRV. I'm not exactly sure what brand it is. It looks like it is a Contour 
and it looks like it's a decent quality. It looks like it's a little bit fray-y, but it is a Cryptek pattern. I think this is Mandrake. I'm not 100% sure on my Cryptek patterns. I think this is either Mandrake or Highlander. I think this is Mandrake. All right, interrupting lightning round. We have gun number two. Up here is a beautiful, you guys, I've talked about these so much. I feel like everybody has one and I still love them so much. These are the Elite Force 1911 Tax. This is the silver one. And I was talking on last video again, how much the black ones were like, ah, this is cool. But dude, look at the gray. I think this gray silver version is absolutely awesome. It actually matches the Crytek pretty well. So I completely lied. It is not the same silver at all. However, this is definitely a darker gray and this is more of a silver but they're cool either way, am I right? He does have one of the Extendo clips for these. I've actually never used one of these, but man, that looks super cool. I'm actually working on getting some real Extendo clips for my Glock, just because why not? But that's pretty sweet. Imagine running this even like an indoor game. It doesn't add that much more like length to the gun, so you wouldn't be hitting anything. Ba 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 ba. And then if you do need an extra magazine, obviously it's gonna work a little bit better having a shorter mag, so you kind of run the big mag for a while first and then you're gonna have a lot more rounds to be a lot more effective and only have to use two mags if you do this. That's just thoughts with Alec Mack. Back to lightning round, we have some sort of black leg holster here. I'm not 100% sure what this is. Looks like it was probably what he was running his Elite Force pistol in. And then he also has one of the Speed QB tiny chest rigs. Dude, these things are so, so, so small. It literally has an admin pouch, some spots for like, if you wanna throw a triple mag on there, you can, but this is so tiny. Honestly feels really good. It's definitely really high quality. All right, moving on to the mags and stuff. So it does look like he's running an extra GMP body here. I'm not exactly sure if this was a build he was working on, but it's just a basic GMP body. However, he does have a ton of mags. You guys know I love these GMP mags so much. These things are absolutely awesome. He does have a few Scorpion Evo mags as well. Looks like he's running two of the high cap ones and then one of this one. I don't know if he's decided to keep that. That was like the one airsoft gun he kept. Honestly, if you're gonna pick one airsoft gun to keep, Scorpion ASG Evo is pretty nice. He's got three basic high caps as well. One of the Lonex flash mags and then this bad boy drum. I'm not exactly sure what brand this is. I believe this is like one of the electric winding ones based on that button right there, but it's out of batteries. Oh, some of you guys are gonna be real happy with what's next. Wow. Yo, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. I remember looking at this and seeing this for the first time when he got this. I was like, dang, that is a super cool mask. This is actually the first time I have ever held a die i5. I've had quite a few i4s, but I always thought this was sweet. I wasn't sure if he had a four or five, but you can definitely tell it's a lot different from the four. I mean, kind of same like profile and stuff. Picture me being in your local California fields. Wait, 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 wait. I probably should be a little bit shorter because I feel like a lot of speed softers are also short kings. I might get fried in the comments for that, but it will probably be from the Short Kings themselves. If you are a speed softer over six foot, uh, sound off below. I will believe you if it's the case, but I don't see a whole lot of like tall speed softers. I also haven't played Airsoft since July, so I guess what do I know? <laughs> Up next, we have an Odin Innovation Speed Loader. These M12 Spidewinders are absolutely awesome. And last but certainly not least, we have his box of accessories. Looks like he's just running some of his boxes here, some CO2 cans. Looks like he did have an Ace Tech Tracer at some point. I don't know if he sold that one a while ago, but it looks like he was kind of keeping his boxes in here. He does have two basic flashlights and some battery chargers as well. But honestly, like me, you guys were probably here for the coolest things as well. I loved Jonah's collection. I always admired some of the things that he got. I was like, dang, dude, you have your stuff set up really well. I love his mask. I love this pistol and I love this rifle. Obviously, when it's tuned by Sure Shot Midget, it's gonna be even better because that means it's not only gonna look good on the outside, but it's gonna also shoot absolute laser beams. This has been Alec Mac 101. I appreciate you guys. I will see you in the next video.